inevitable. And I am Top Cloud. Anyway, enough of that, welcome back to another No Armor run, where the Sulfur and Ash exfoliate from the deepest pits of hell, entering my body through every crevice, giving me the urge and motivation to do another one of these psychological damaging dilemmas. But hey, it might be different this time, you never know. And before hopping into the sweet and sour playthrough, we gotta lay down some ground rules. First things first, using any modifiers, potions, placeables, or any item in general that raises your defense even by a smidge, is strictly forbidden. Except shields. Shields such as the Shield of Cthulhu or the Cobalt Shield are gonna be allowed for use. The total defense points these shields give combined is about three. And considering that all three defense can protect me from as an abandoned anthill, I was just gonna let it slide. And yes, I understand that the Shield of Cthulhu is considered a melee weapon, but honestly, I don't really care. Also, I'm gonna be adding a slight twist just to really butter up your experience by only using the default ammo. That goes for muskets, arrows, darts, rockets, you get the gist. And lastly, no armor. And that wraps up the 31 paragraph constitutional rules for this run. So it's time to kick back, grab a lemonade Capri Sun you could sip on, and enjoy the ride. Spawning into a landscape of trees yet again, I start beheading logs to be able to make the bread to my butter, the void to my tax forms, a wooden bow. The first weapon that'll actually let me defend myself against ruthless homicide by a bouncing jello cup. I craft a few till I get a decent modifier, then start running around the world. But not even 20 feet into my exploration, I come across a living wood tree that blesses me with Hermes boots. Oh my god, no way! <laughs> that's, that's insane luck. The footwear of a demigod this early into the game. <laughs> Cool, it, Terraria, you haven't even taken me out yet. Well, now that I've located the jungle, here's where I made it my one and only goal to find a boomstick. I didn't care about the hourly fee it took since grabbing a gun would allow the arms dealer to move in, and that besides giving up was my only goal for now. So I set up shop for my NPCs and workstations and threw myself back into the jungle. And how I wish I could say I walked out of this place cooler than an ice tray straight out of Antarctica with a boomstick in hand, but that was not the case. The first few steps to this green hell was met with me grabbing a life crystal, a magic mirror with some water walking boots, and no boomstick. But digging deeper and deeper, collecting all the in my path, I was able to upgrade my shabby bow and fill my health up with some more hot, sticky life crystals. I was then met face to face with a blood moon, which took a very horrible U-turn of me beating my maker over and over again. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> But once that tragic event was over, I was again thrown back into it. I don't think I can describe just how miserable it was to step in, then immediately get blasted out. Seems like that hourly fee got to me after all. So instead, let's fight a boss. I know it's pretty early, but I figured with a platinum bow and 260 health with some Hermes boots was all that was needed to slam this eyeball like it was a new NBA season. Not to mention I was stacked with archery potions. So for the first half of the fight, I didn't even get hit. I found such a good rhythm that it made it an absolute cakewalk. Even the second phase was super easy. Even though a fawn started to assist me, which I considered a shame since it felt unfair, but hear me out. It's whatever. So I just upgraded to the demon bow and equipped the mighty shield of Cthulhu and did it again. Once in your pathetic life, don't fail. So with all my rage taken out on a non-sentient eyeball instead of my poor desk, I head back to the jungle. Never mind, we're going to the corruption. I blow two shadow orbs to smithereens, giving me the musket, which will finally allow the arms dealer to make an appearance in my compact studio apartments, which will give me access to infinite ammo. I then got reminded of a meme, so I stopped everything I was doing to find it for some reason. Anyway, I make some more structural revamps to my duplex for more comfort, then continue searching for the shotgun. Will I find it this time putting an end to my torment? No. But something something, traveling merchant decided to drop by and sell me a revolver. And despite this being my first time using this gun, I was feeling like motherfucking Rick Grimes. But I'll tell you what, with this revolver I was able to shoot and shoot and inflict great pain upon the jungle's indecorous life forms, eventually leading me to the boomstick. Now all that was missing was the ammo. So I made some more humble bows to get the arms dealer in as fast as possible, and to pass the time I started setting up my storage system. Since keeping chests organized feels like me getting constant paper cuts on my kidneys and liver. And believe me, that is something I don't want to feel. And it didn't even take that long to do. So, I started drilling a tunnel through the earth to reach Satan's hot and sweaty domain. Also, because I needed to find more life crystals. Pretty simple. And by the time I was close to being done with it, the arms dealer greets me at the front of my door with the ammunition I need to blast through every single tyrant in this damn game. So since I was still missing some more life crystals, I went ahead and got those as well as finding two gravitation potions just radiating charisma. I of course used them to find a couple sky islands that gave me a red balloon, a lucky horseshoe, and a useless star fury. Not a bad haul. Not bad indeed. So with all my scrumptious accessories and bullets, I was ready to go toe to toe with the Eater of Worlds. So I attacked every tree in sight to be able to construct a huge arena for this guy. Since I didn't exactly know how hard it was going to be to deal with giant worm segments flying in every single direction I went. Over preparation? I think not. Anyway, I blew up the last orb I needed. Will this diseased Alaskan bullworm be able to eat away at my soul, or will I just end up sitting here for 10 minutes straight chipping away at its health at snail speeds? 
honestly, the fight was super easy. It was super easy since I literally made an arena the size of a small state, but uh, yeah, victory royale. So with me now having access to succulent hellstone, I made it my new goal to make the sweet molten fury. So I popped an obsidian skin pot, ready to bathe in lava, grabbing all the stone I needed, as well as a hellforge, can't forget about that. And with a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, bop bop, I now have myself a catalyst crippler. Sorta. Another spectacular thing about this bow is that it turns my wooden arrows into flaming arrows. Hey, I'm technically still using the default arrow, so no cheaty cheaty here. And with my new assortment of goodies, I almost felt ready enough to dive into the jungle and take on the queen bee. The one and only reason I wanted to fight her was because she drops a bow called the bee's d's. And that's what I was going to be using to fight the wall of flesh since it actually had a really good relationship with wooden arrows. Oh, and you can't forget about the bee nades. But before stepping into her sticky fortress... I needed the goblin tinker, and the goblin army has been avoiding me like I had a new form of the plague, I may say. So what did I do? started slaughtering goblin scouts, that's what. And after a couple merry-go-round trips around the world, I end up with enough cloth to drag the pasty bastards to me. Now I could pull a waffle time and say I nonetheless fucked these goblins to outer worlds and back, but that would be an understatement. It was like I threw a lit molotov at a bunch of preschoolers. Oh how they didn't stand a chance. And finding the tinker was as easy as that. I of course free him and assign him to a house to lower the cost of his overpriced items, and after reforging my weapons and combining some of my accessories, it was now time to rip the B out of the B whatever that means. So I tiptoe my way to a hive to start making an arena. But tiptoeing was soon no longer an option since I would keep getting my ass handed to me by bees smaller than my left nut. But I shooed them away to keep wreaking havoc on their home. And eventually what was done was done. Well kinda, I broke her cocoon on accident trying to rid of her kids. And you know what? Doesn't even matter. I still ended up giving her the Tyson 3-5 combo. What made this fight so doable was the fact that I had a big ass pool of honey right beneath me. So I could just take a dip into it whenever I was poisoned which would pretty much negate the treacherous flu. Of course I didn't get the bow so I mollywopped her more times before finally getting it. I also got a ton of bean aids and wax, which will be very useful. I then reforged my new decimator of a pollen stick and tested out on the vulnerable eye of Cthulhu. I used the scraps of my money he left behind to reforge more things, then went to fight the eater of worlds again, since I was very, very poor. And yes, the fight didn't even wring a drop of sweat off my forehead. Anyway, I feel like here's a good time to start talking about potions. The bosses get harder, people. I don't. So fishing was about to be a very vital hobby that I would have to take a part of. All the fish I was gonna need for now was gonna be ebb and coin armored cave fish for the rat and endurance potions. So I made sure I was A-OK -okay on bait before spending around 40 minutes hoisting my line into the infectious water of the caverns. And after grabbing a comfortable amount of my fishy friends, I stored them for the wall of flesh fight and head over to the dungeon to prepare for our good friend Skeletron. I wasn't originally going to fight him since there was nothing really I needed from the dungeon, but to reduce the amount of time I spent searching for herbs and fishing, I thought it was going to be best to grab the alchemy table. And as I watched the sunset, I sacrificed the old man to be able to spray Skeletron with some maximum strength raid, just like the pest he is. Ending him extremely easy, I hop into the depths of his molestation chamber to receive the coke to my nostril and leave the place like nothing ever happened. Also, I imprisoned this gold bunny for some reason. Okay, anyway, I cook up some more potions with my new cocktail smithy and before I fought the wall of flesh, I thought it would be a good idea to make a pylon system. Figured I could use them for a while until they got corrupted. So... I didn't actually have the pylons yet, but when the NPCs gradually moved in one by one, I'll have it all working better than ever. Okay, the big moment. The moment in history. It's time to take on the wall of flesh. Well, almost. I had to collapse some buildings for space first. Didn't want to be running into these while a giant level 9 wall from Clash Clans was coming to devour me. And no, I didn't build a runway. I was too lazy for that shit. And in the middle of the fight, I realized I forgot to bring my bee nades. Also, it hurt me seeing that the amount of damage I dealt to this guy was about as comparable as me trying to shove this thing into a pencil sharpener. But too bad, so sad. Apparently, I didn't create enough space. So while waiting for the guy to return, I make two boxes for the jungle pylon since I didn't do it yet, but honestly, as soon as I saw one of the rooms were too small, I just gave up on that idea. For lord only knows why. Anyway, I spawn him in again, feeling much better about the space I have to work with. Also, this time I brung those b-nades with me. Now I just gotta hope my balls really are made out of 65% steel, cause I didn't want to have to keep use, reuse, and recycling these expensive ass b-nades. At this point, the only one to blame is myself. In all actuality, what the fuck? Well, you probably already know what time it is. It's time to farm for all my shit back. I started off brutally disemboweling the queen bee like it was some ancient torture method multiple times. I then make the to die for bee nades as well as making more space in hell and reforging anything to the menacing modifier so I can get the highest possible damage output. And once I summon in the wall, I hold the fattest grudge on this game from this point forward. At this point, I was as degraded as I could be. Dying with victory that close really felt like someone rubbing both my elbows with sandpaper until there was nothing left but bone marrow. I again make potions and jump back down into the abyss to meet the same fate. Almost nothing, and I mean nothing, was holding me back from using my mic arm as a bat on my monitor like it was some sort of pinata. I didn't want to play anymore in short terms. At this point, I had no more bee nades, and I didn't want to spend 20 minutes farming for more just to be as disappointed as Verbal Ace was. So I decided to try again, but with a more 
straightforward strategy. Run. Make as much distance as I possibly could. So that's exactly what I did. Instead of aiming, I just shot in every direction towards the wall. Using the bees for my bow to my advantage with them running into his weak spots made it the only reason I could really do this. But after three hours of rinse and repeating the process, I take down the wall with a staggering amount of health left. Now we enter the second phase gate of the game. Not ready for the unnecessary amount of pain to come, but ready to endure it. I get very lucky with the wall treasure bag giving me the ranger emblem for some more juicy DPS. I also eat the demon heart and start heading to the corruption to break as many altars as I could. My plan as of now was to focus on getting a proper weapon loadout to be able to fend off against the hard mode enemies. Next was to worry about accessories and reforging. And last but not least, I needed to make a big ass arena for the mechs. But little did I know that enduring the beast in the caverns was going to be quite literally the biggest pain in the ass. I was able to find and save the wizard, then died. Find some palladium, then died. Made the sweet orc Calcum Anvil then died. You can kind of see the pattern here. But for the life of me, I couldn't survive long enough to properly mine any titanium. I had enough for a forge and that was it. So I had to scratch getting a repeater off the list. So instead I started to focus more on collecting souls of light and night to fight mimics. Since both hollow and corrupt mimics give very pleasing ranged weapons. But first I realized that the arms dealer sells a new shotgun so I threw him some coin for one. Oh and as well as an ammo box. Also to prevent any more unnecessary deaths I grind up some crystal for meth and sell it to the goblin tinker to reforge my mediocre items. And after collecting enough souls for a single key of light I take take my chances at getting the marvelous Dayless Stormbow. And after picking away at this thing for about 5 minutes, I almost couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, the first mimic. Never in a million years will this happen again. And while reforging it into the Unreal modifier, I decided to make all my accessories have the Lucky modifier. And let's not stop there, we can still make this bow even more powerful. Of course by obtaining the Magic Quiver. So I went ahead and got myself one from a little AFK farm I made, and with a Magma Stone I got a while back, I combined the two to make the Molten Quiver. So far, this was going splendidly. Better than I could have ever imagined. Two hours into hard mode and we were sure as hell hot and ready to take on our first mech. Well, loadout wise. But just to have a backup weapon, I went to the part of hell that was sorta of corrupted to farm for more souls a night. If you're wondering why I stuck with the enemies in hell, well, it's because I couldn't last two seconds in the actual underground corruption. Mainly because the game decided to bend me 180 degrees into the air and made the corruption in the desert. Anyway, after collecting souls and fighting mimics for a good 20 minutes, I finally got the dart rifle. Also, just to throw this out there, I didn't know what a default dart would be. I mean, I would've assumed that it would be poison, but instead I just ended up going with crystal darts, but it didn't even matter in the end because I didn't even end up using this for any bosses. So do as you will with that information. But here's a little montage of me destroying the scenery and building a king size arena for the oh so lovely mechs. Okay, here we are. I spawned him in ready to absolutely kick ass, but guess what? Even though my damage was comparable to a G6 flying into this thing, my arena was still lacking space. Also, I completely forgot about wings and potions, but we're just gonna ignore that. So I patched up the dark and empty dents in my skull by actually focusing on what I was missing. Cockiness gets you nowhere, unless you're a spanning. And after gathering all the items I needed, I purchased a crystal ball from the wizard to be able to make the endless quiver, as well as making the endless musket pouch, so I didn't have to worry about running out of my main ammunition source. I also upgraded my king size arena into a share size by making the living tree disappear. And now if everything goes according to plan, this fight should go smoother than my brain at 3am thinking on how the hell to beat Plantera. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but... This was the easiest shit I've done. Comparing this fight to the ones in my previous videos, dude, it wasn't even night and day. I was literally standing on the sun. I will admit though, a lot of help came from my mount. I was actually zooming with that thing. But yeah, that's the first mech down. Very pleasing. So since I now had souls of might, I wanted to grab the barrel of a gun and kebab it straight through a shark. To make the mega shark, of course. So I drank some gills potions and waited for the great whites to arrive. But in the middle of finning sharks, I remember about the star cannon and how it had an improved version of combined with hollow bars. So I finish up my chores and buy two mini sharks to make the delightful mega shark and the super star shooter. Now I was going to have to use this upgraded star cannon sparingly since collecting fallen stars is a very big pain, especially when you're too lazy to set up the most simplest of farms. I already had a bit of ammo saved up so it wasn't the biggest deal for now because it wasn't even what I was going to use to finish off the mechs. The stormbow had me covered like it was a Geico ad. I reforged my new toys and had also made the twin summon prior so being very comfortable with my odds I spawned them in. And first off the mega shark is fucking insane. Second, I don't think I could have ever thunk in a million years that fighting the twins with no armor would be easy. Range really does seem like the savior for the most dire situations. Finding a pattern was so ridiculously easy thanks to this gun. I haven't felt this American in a while. Now understanding the potency within this class, I waste no time at all by collecting more souls to cook up the mechanical skull. I could already hear Skeletron pissing himself like the weak vermin he is. But before clapping them cheeks, I do some more fishing for the splendid wrath potion, then be gone. The execution.
I'd say he was a tiny bit harder, but hey, mine had bonus points for veins. And with having the souls of fright, I crafted up a goddamn flamethrower. You thought sticking a metal rod into a shark was cool? Well, it's nothing compared to this. And luckily for me, gel was gonna be absolutely no problemo since I had a slime statue just chilling in my elevator. So I set up the slime decimator 9000 just for a bit of gel, not that much. Then I started working on some more NPC housing since I wanted the steampunker to move in. I then slid over to the jungle to collect a bunch of glowing green rocks to make the chlorophyte shot bow. And that was pretty much all the upgrades I made. So let's just move on to the part where I spend 55 minutes looking for a fucking plantera bulb. I wish I was lying, I really do. But soon I rehydrate my shriveled up gonads from just the sight of a beautiful bulb and started blowing up a massive hole straight through the jungle. I wasn't exactly thinking about how I would operate this quote unquote arena, but you know what? Thinking isn't my forte. Devastation is. Okay, before I actually went ahead and threw myself into harm's way, let me tell you how I was thinking this would play out. So the plan was I break the bulb and lure her below me. Then I would slowly fly up my little tunnel, blasting her with my flamethrower until she got to her second phase. Then I would pull the greatest turn maneuver ever seen, leading her back down and slaughtering her. Are you retarded? So I farmed for more gel, potions, and the ammo reservation pots since I just remembered about it, and gave the giant plant a whirl. But I had just a slight oopsie fucking daisy. She shoots petals in her first phase. I swear, I've killed this plant at least a hundred times and somehow I forget she shot projectiles. And if you couldn't see the big red button here, mixing a narrow tunnel with razor leaves flying at you isn't exactly the best combo. So that brings us back to step one, find a plant terra bulb. So skipping ahead to find another one. And yes, I'm listening to FNAF music. What, what are you gonna do? I prepare a decent arena for her first phase so I can lure her back to the tunnel when she's nice and ready, which was working just fine at first. Everything was going according to plan until I actually got to the tunnel part. I didn't even realize I was going to need something to stand on from time to time to refresh my wing usage. Sure, I could grapple onto the sides, but it was a lot more risky, and so much for my turnaround traction. Dude, I could barely get past her. I feel like if I just added some wiring for this part, then I would have had this done and over by now. And of course, something else just has to kick and spit on me while I'm down. Pirates. You have got to be fucking kidding me. This game is treating my nuts like they're stress balls, people. And depending on how long it takes me to find another ball, they just might end up like a stretch Armstrong next. And yes, I know, I could have made a simple life fruit farm to let some bulbs grow, but hey, didn't I just say thinking wasn't my forte? Exactly. So while mass slaughtering slimes, I took a look at the map. As desperate as a dad on New Year looking for a Bud Light, I was peeking into the darkest cracks of this thing, and there was nothing. Literally nothing. But upon searching for one in real time, I got astronomically lucky. There was one towards the bottom of the tunnel. This was an amazing spot to do this, so if I mess up, I might just actually cause a chemical leak at a nearby hospital. So I carefully make a quick and simple plan, starting off with making a decent space to circle around her in her first phase, then filling my tunnel with the occasional platform to land on. And last but not least, I blow up a decent sized crater near the top for less of a chance of getting pummeled while turning the ship around. And stocked with potions and gel, I break the bulb for the third time. Also, I was serious. If I die, I will actually do some very illegal things. Breaking news irrelevant YouTube delinquent known as Top Cloud has just caused a massive chemical leak near a hospital filled with cancer patients. Suspects say the cause of this doing was because he went into a fit of rage over losing a fight in a video game. He is now behind bars awaiting trial. Back to you, Emma. Oh my god, yes, dude. Oh my. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thank fucking Christ she's dead. That was a very sour experience, and if I have to go through something like that again, I'm going for a children's hospital now. So with the annoying plant down, I creep my way into the post-plantera dungeon to farm for ectoplasm. Since if you didn't already know, the Frostmoon event has some very, very delectable weapons, which will in fact spoon feed bullets or fire into the mouths of anything that asks politely enough. And before actually giving the event a shot, I try to make a little auto killer contraption to help me out with the early waves. But oh, how I couldn't have been more wrong. Instead of the elves and gingerbread men screaming in agony from being engulfed in flames, they choose to laugh in my face, almost as if they were being tickled. I end up crawling my way to wave 7 before the knight says goodbye, and I got jack shit from it. So with salt already in my wound, I summon in another one. I change up the auto killer to give me a bit more leverage for dealing more damage. I also move my slime decimator 9000 to the middle of my arena so I could actually do a drive-by from time to time to restock on more gel. And that's all the extra preparations I've done. And much to everyone's surprise, I get the same fucking result. Except I did get a pair of festive wings, which made having salt in my wound downgrade to hydro peroxide. And at this point, I started to 
think I was going to need to spend literal days farming this event to even acquire one of the many things I needed. So you know what? I said fuck that and moved on to Golem without any further preparations. Really does seem like a reoccurring dilemma. So I clear out the temple, but of course not without having backhand after backhand delivered to me in a nice formal wrapped gift. And oh my lord, thank you Terraria for blessing me with an actual decent sized space to make this fight somewhat feasible. I light up the room before tussling with Golem. And I should mention, I didn't bring any potions, nor did I set up a platform. So I pretty much just asked politely for him to rip my spine out of my body and use it as a jump rope. Also, it actually took six minutes just to take down both of his hands. I could vividly remember muttering to myself in real time, what the actual hell is this? So again, I was back to farming gel, then starting another match. Even though I came a bit more prepared, it still wasn't any better. The constant mob spawns and golem turning into a laser spring conundrum was just a ridiculous amount of bullshit. At this point, I was pretty chewed up, so I called it quits for a while. Just to take a step back and think about how I can actually improve my rung out strategies. So I come back to build a platform above him so I can avoid the lasers a bit better. And it was working. Until a lizard decided to full on sprint into me. So of course I try again. Do you just want to take a wild guess of what happens? Also a solar eclipse started harassing me just wanted to throw that out there. Oh my lord, but you'll never believe it. I came up with a solution to end this. Fight Duke Fishron. Wild, right? But think about it. That tsunami though. Hear me out. And no, I ain't talking about that. But what if I kill Duke to get the tsunami and just use that to beat the game? Crazy, right? Problem is, I don't think I've ever found a glowing mushroom biome, except one. There was one at the dungeon. Now, I didn't know how big it actually was, but I ran over to it to check it out. Well, eventually I did. And I couldn't express just how disappointed I was. Literally 20 minutes straight of deaths trying to get to this thing, just for it to have the circumference of an orange. So I went on an expedition to find a bigger one, which thankfully didn't take that long. So I kidnap a few truffle worms for some reasonable sacrifices and test my luck with the old duke. And let me say, I actually should have said this a while ago, but rangers started falling off a bit. I mean, think about it. It's insane how I flew through the mech so easily and so fast, then started to get absolutely bodied by Plantera. <laughs> and it really just kept going. Anyway, duke is usually usually pretty easy for me, but with the low amount of damage I was doing to it, it made the fight last a pretty good while. So I actually had to try. Pretty obscure, right? But after dealing with his lousy last phase, I take down the big pig man and shockingly get the tsunami in the first bag. And now that I had this bow, I could pretty much do whatever the hell I wanted. So I started off with redoing the frost bow. And this bow made this event criminally easy. Nothing stood a chance. Everything was dying like a fly, being held in an oven set to 365 degrees. I ended up grabbing the chain gun, which is the opposite of what I wanted, but at this point I didn't really care anymore. So you know what? It's golem time. And let me say, even though I had godly power, dodging this chunk of ancient pyramid still felt like someone using a cheese grater on my elbows. But that didn't matter because he was soon in shambles. Twice, just because I felt like it. I didn't get the pig saw, but I did get the eye of the golem, so I made the destroyer emblem for some more crit chance. And at this point, I figured I didn't need any more better weapons, accessories, or health. I just wanted to go balls deep and run straight towards the moon lord. So I gather up more potions so I could face the one, the only, Nutcracker. And basically the tsunami washes its hands and sharpens its fillet knife, seasons the roast before serving this overworldly alchemist on a fully golden diamond platter. And here we are, met face to face with the glowing creature infested fleshlights. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, I do not wish to speak of the 47 deaths that took place getting rid of three of these things. So instead, I'm just gonna hit you with a very obsolete Fonk montage, just to describe how it went. And there we go, the gay washes away. Now with having the sweet godly pillar weapons, I buy a ton of hollow seeds from the dryad to expand my hollow into my arena to be able to farm for lace wings. Because before fighting the moon lord, I wanted to get the soaring insignia, cause unlimited flight with cockatoo wings is actually broken. So to speed up the growing process, I tried to sleep through the rest of the day, but soon realized you can't sleep when a fucking event is in action. So that last pillar had to go. But before summoning a giant squid that looks like something straight out of the book of Belial, I went to the dungeon yet again to farm for the black tabby. See guys, zero defense for moon lord. Fantastic. And at this point it was already night, so I managed to sneak an attempt in with the Empress, only to get severely and gruesomely dismembered. And waiting for night to rise again started to feel like getting rug burn in between my fingers. So I just said screw it and took down the last pillar. Very far from surprising, I get absolutely mauled by the Moon Lord. But hey, at least I could finally rest my head to refresh my mind and unwind from all the times I got mutilated by every species in this damn game.
And finally, I take down the Empress receiving my prize and an extra pair of Empress Wings, which I was very happy with. Now, with being as prepared as I could be, I reforge my new goodies and make sure I'm mighty fine on potions and raise the sigil to the sky to start the final battle. Now, with range being the jaw-dropping, cheek-clenching mystery that it is, the strategy was quite simple. Make distance. So much distance, in fact, that the only thing you'll be able to look at was the tips of his fingers. But just because we had an advantage over our distance didn't mean we were invincible to his heavy beams. I got a bit uncomfortable at times, but somehow I managed to survive with minimal PTSD to haunt me. I try to keep every single one of his eyes at similar health so I wouldn't have to deal with one buggy meal while I took the rest out. This strat quickly went to hell. This strat quickly went about as well as any obese person walking into a Burger King. But regardless, I still managed to pry open his tough core and start throwing absolute haymakers at it. And I must say, the rest of this fight was a complete joke. Having so much range to my disposal really made every single projectile that was thrown at me futile. I'd say the hardest part of it was having to turn around once I got to the edge of the world. And after a good 7 minutes, he was up and out of here. Before I end the video off, I must say, no armor paired with this class has got to be the most underwhelming change. It really felt like I was playing the game normally. But anyway, what's done is yet again done, and thank you for joining me on this ride, this series, this complication, and I hope to see you in another video. So, farewell.